Welcome back, everybody, to Major League So Rare. It's your man Trippin' B here uh, on a double game week Wednesday uh, preview edition. We It's a Monday night as I'm recording this here for So Rare TV. And as you can see, once again, I've been left high and dry by my co-host, Draft Kicks. He bailed yet again. Oh, no, the graphic is up. Uh, sorry, Skylar, I had to call you out because, you know, I'm sitting here dedicating myself to this show, Slay, you know, just slumming along getting shows out for the people and uh draft kicks gonna make it but that's all right he has real life and family concerns and things like that whereas i'm just a single dude being me playing so rare so i did bring in a buddy i brought in his artist fan club a legend of the mls uh soccer community uh the terror of men multiple discords if you have not been blocked by him yet consider yourself lucky uh he's famous for the hate list that we've talked about on the solar in the states pod that i work on as well with mls card guy and i'm so happy to make the major league so rare television debut of zardis fan club how you doing jake i'm i'm great man super sub coming in mm -hmm. like little jovelic action chicharitos on the bench at home didn't want to show up <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah come in, Cheech, come in score a goal keep you know, Cheech bailed yet for. again jovelic yeah. comes in and makes it happen mm -hmm. i love it. i'm a big jovelic fan so that's i like that yeah. comparison a lot not a big carson galaxy fan but hey what can we do no no not many people are anymore yeah if you don't know zardis fan club let's give a little bit of intro material before we get into the heart of the episode here because jake you're an awesome guy we've met just through online and you're like the guy like Next time there's a so rare meetup, I need you there if I'm going because I we need we need to like say hey and what's up and you, you need to make me laugh yeah. in person as much as you have over the internet. Yeah. But you're a huge fan of Giassi's art is that's where the name comes from, obviously. And you've yeah. explained that you sort of explained some of the reasoning in the Major League So Rare Discord. I did that, a bit of a love letter this morning. That when yeah, I and that inspired yeah, that's almost that's kind of what inspired me. I was like, oh, I gotta get him to come in on the show. There's another reason which we'll get into in a second as well. But mm -hmm. share some of that Giassi story and why. Even though he's kind of a a mercurial and uh, polarizing figure in U.S. soccer circles, as you uh -huh. wear the uh, the Uncle Sam uh, denim blue jean kit there, a tell us why yeah. you love Giassi and why others should as well. Yeah, well, uh, he grew up in the in the adjacent town to me. I think he grew up in Hawthorne. Um, he's a, he's a family man. He dyes his hair. He bleaches his hair because his grandma watches all of his games on TV, and it makes it easier to see because she doesn't have good eyesight because she's grandma. And that's just grandma. the most endearing thing. Mm -hmm. Again, he's got a beautiful family. He's a father of four. He's a dog dad. Uh, he looks like a fantastic parent. You can just tell. Um, <laughs> kind of like Carlos Vela also, you can kind of tell is a really good parent because I don't know if you've seen his daughter. It's just adorable. Runs out on the field, like does a celebration for him. I have not. That's uh, great. Giassi also receives like a lot of hate mm -hmm. uh, and like a lot of racism. Sure. Abuse. And, Right. And he has like, he's obviously not God's gift to football or anything. Like he's not Messi Ronaldo. I'm not saying that, but he's had an outstanding career in the MLS and uh, as a U.S. national team, he played with so much passion for the crest. I have a lot of hateless players on the national team because they mm -hmm. don't give a shit and they just look like they don't care. And yes, Giassi can sky one over the bar and but he like looks like he's really upset about it. He can also just randomly get hit in the face and score. And <laughs> and those are those are fantastic too. Does he have a horrible first touch? Absolutely. Like it is what it is, but he he's scored a lot of goals in the MLS. He's got a great career and I thought that someone should love him as much as some people hate him for really no reason, but I got a lot of reasons why. So I'm a big yeah. I'm a big Giassi guy. So, so well said. Uh, yeah. Don't we all wish that we had someone to love us as much as our biggest hater hates us? I, th I think we'd all be in a better situation. At, at your that, God. That yeah, point. you're right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Someone's got to stand up, you know, for a, just a great guy. Yeah. Well, as you know, as everybody knows at this point, hopefully, if you've been watching the show all season, we like to start with talking about the sweet dose of ETH, the, the results. We look, let's look back real quick at what we did. And Jake, you a sweet dose of ETH is nothing to you. At this point, we we love to joke in the M MLS Discord about getting the dose and oh, you know, I need a prescription filled, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It's it's gone well beyond doses for you. You've yeah. you're <laughs> sitting tonight as we record this with with Opta on, Opta's the only person who can stop you, as far as I know. Yeah. Your third straight podium, mm -hmm. three weeks in a row on the podium of America Rare, if I'm not mistaken, or is One it different two, divisions? 270. Okay, one was 270 yeah. and then twice America Rare. 
Yeah. And it's not just podium. We're talking yeah. first place here. You're trying to yeah. bring home a championship here. And again, it's it's only Opta. And I think you're past all the secondary re reviews. How do you feel? Uh, you know, it feels good. Just blessed to be here. Uh, <laughs> it's an honor to be nominated. You know? It's an honor to be nominated. Uh, Opta, once again, mm -hmm. blessed me overnight in the secondary reviews up a point. I, I'm up against a whale. Beautiful. Like I'm the underdog people's champion. It's got $250,000 gallery. I'm a simple man of the people just played rares. My first purchase was Kenneth Cronholm, you know, with my, with my stimulus checks. So I I'm a common, it. I'm a common man. And, uh, I got a 0.59 point lead on a, on a yeah. whale. So you're fighting, you're fighting the 1%. You said less than a point there lead there. Yeah. 0.59. We have this, three is this, of the same is this a European whale that doesn't even care about MLS and just throwing random cards into America? That that would really piss he's got me a lot. Too. He's got a lot of lineups. Yeah, he's he's got like forty uniques. He's right. uh, yeah, he's not yeah, really don't buy uniques. Yeah, but <laughs> I can speak from experience. They don't pay off. Uh, with the ones I bought, I bought Charlotte FC uniques like a freaking moron. That's my problem. Yeah. But if you buy the right uniques, it's actually a pretty good deal. But yeah, congrats, dude. I think that's awesome. Three podiums in a row is amazing. I think I only have three to my name in a year and or two years of playing. So this, this um, should be my next. yeah. Yeah, it, it's got to feel good, and hope you get a great prize. I don't know. Is there anyone in the prize pool that you really want to bring home? Or uh, Yeah, uh, Almada, um, Petrovic. But I'm, I butcher names. That's my that's, one weakness. That's great. I think you that's nailed both weakness. of those, yeah. yeah. Um, and then who else was up there? Insigne was also up there. So one of those hey. three would be... I mean, would, okay. yeah, I, 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 I would, would much rather win Almada than Insigne personally if it was up to yeah. me. But yeah, uh, well, I'd have to get rid of Almada because I'm worried about the transfer. But well, but he'd still be. I mean, at that point, yeah. He's, I mean, yeah. it's you could sell him for a lot more than Insigne. I feel like, right? I think only like point one more. Give that a few months. I think I think you'll be in a, in a, in a much better situation <laughs> next. Months. Just wait for Lorenzo to pull a hammy or something like that, and it, it's going to change up a lot. So yeah. Uh, very cool. And what I think what that tells me is that first off, we're honored to have you in the discord. You know, you're very helpful. You're a big LAFC fan. All right. If I'm not yeah, mistaken, yeah, and you, born and raised, we, we yeah. appreciate you and wedge game, like sort of being our yeah. LAFC sources there and a few others, but you guys definitely speak up the most about lineup help. And that's one of the coolest things of our discord is like, uh, the, the main, as most people, if you know me, you know that I'm banned from the, the kept it actual, too real. The official. I kept it too real in the official <laughs> Discord. I got myself booted. They did apologize and say that I was wrongfully booted, and they invited me back. Said, no, I said hell no. Out I'm not coming back. I, you need yeah. me more than I need you. So uh, I uh, I have a lot of discords. I'm in several servers and chatting with people all over the place. Side chats. We, most most hardcore so rare players do that. I'm sure. And. We started this one major league so rare, and it's just a great group. And thank you for being part of it. Thanks to everybody. And what I think like your results are showing is that like we need you because Skyler and I are struggling. We we put ourselves out there as MLS experts, and uh yeah, I don't know, man. The results are you're the real expert, is what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, well, you know, I live and breathe this shit. Uh Wedge Game is is my dad. Shout out to Wedge Game. He's not like literally my dad, but like I do feel like he's my so rare he father. Might as well be, yeah. Might as well be. Um, a lot of great guys in there. It's a great place. That, I um, do miss it. I do miss the MLS channel. That's why I yeah. feel like I finally, like a year and a half after my ban, we finally got a little bit of that recreated with the MLS so rare discord for sure. Yeah. So, but yeah, thank you, man. And, and, uh, and thanks to everybody. If you don't know, if you haven't gotten in, it's time to get in, uh, look for the description of this video or look for, uh, you can DM me, someone DM me today asking for the invite link. So, that can happen. Let's get on with, uh, uh, again, congratulations on your podium. Hope it holds out for first. We pray to the Opti Gods. Anything you want to say to the Opti Gods? I know uh, we're going to do, we're going to make a sacrifice to them a little bit later in the show. We will. Uh, I love Egypt. Um, <laughs> I'd like to thank my, the Italian. Are the Opti Gods in Egypt? Why, why Egypt? I'm pretty, aren't they from Egypt? Isn't maybe, their headquarters okay, maybe. In I didn't Egypt? know that. I did not know that. Okay. There think, you go. So, Learn something you know, new. All that, I'd like to shout out my uh, the Italian Telegram of about thirty users that that follow my moves. So I just learned about that. I have like they like speak Italian. They're like, oh, this guy's winning a lot, and they just track what you do. They follow me. God, that's got to feel good. That I've, has got was that a, got to feel a good. huge. And recently, Paul offered to buy my gallery. So. 
that's a badge of honor. Having my having a Telegram group that stalks me, mm-hmm. another badge of honor. Hopefully, my third first place coming up, another badge of honor. I'm loving all this. It's not bragging if it's true. And my only question <laughs> is, are you considering some fa- fake fake moves to throw off the Italian Telegram group? Buy a few duds on purpose with your winnings here, just to just to just to. You know, muddy the um, waters of the telegrammers. I don't. I don't, know. I don't think so. You know, I, I it's against my my vibes. I want to keep them good, positive, like good. they're doing the right thing. I, I do give a lot of information out and like a lot of my opinions, and close to no one follows them in the in the main official Discord. Like it's it's crazy. Um, it, yeah, I I can lead them to water, but can't make right. you drink. Well, let's do. Uh, I, we're gonna get some opinions from you tonight right, yeah. for sure. Like, okay, I, I, okay, that's really what it's all about. I'm, I'm gonna. Bring I come in hot. Well, good. I, I know that from being on shows with you before. I'm well aware. If we get, we can't. We don't have time to get into the hate list. But is there anyone uh, new? Any recent entries? Like the latest entry on your hate list? Maybe. Uh, yes, actually, um, I didn't think the game week was going to go well because I I had two new entries mm-hmm. about 20 minutes into the game week. I already had two entries. The first was there was a speck of dust on the camera in the Nashville. DC United game, we hate and that. I thought it was a burnt out pixel on my monitor. I thought it was dust on my monitor. I had like a whole, I had a whole thing with this speck of dust in that. So I, I hate that camera operator. I hate that speck of dust. Number two, the speck was, of dust is on the hate list. Yeah, there's just now a speck of dust on the hate list. Yeah, I, I was close to a mental breakdown Unreal. over the speck of dust. Uh, Insanity. Right. And then uh, Ruan, Ruan, on DC Ruan. United, yeah, he got he got added to the hate list. Yeah, as well, well I, yeah. yeah, he's been I've been hating him since his Orlando days, so that's no surprise yeah. to me. Uh, let's check in real quick with the Hundred Club. As you see, only one member last weekend, Facundo Torres. Nice job. Uh, only one DA for a, for a hundred is pretty nice. You got to admit. I think Buanga almost got there. I'm shocked Buanga didn't make a hundred. He all the usual suspects here, except Alex Rodan. He's kind of under the radar, is he not? He's borderline. He's hate list in watch, in watch. He's uh, really he, I, I, his application has been submitted to the hate the, list. The roll man. They, I don't know. They, it's just something. Something off. about him. I I like to call Christian rolled on the real CR seven. So I I don't know. I'm a, fa- <laughs> I'm a fan of Christian. I like Christian and hate Alex. So that's that's where I come down. I, I don't know. I'm not invited yeah. to dinner. I don't think. Uh, any other takes from three seventy one before uh, just important things that might you know point towards future things from last week's games before we dig harder into the midweek matchups uh no i think i think we'll get into it when the new matchups come like it'll say last it'll, it'll, it'll all yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll flow together it'll flow together okay well then let's get right into it why not uh the uh odds check is where we like to start and so i will do that right about now i uh i'm going to do something new this is on your recommendation uh, Jake, so if it, if it works, great. If it's horrible, then not good. But uh, we went with the DraftKings odds instead of the Bovada. I don't know if the lines are any different, but it looks a little more readable, so I do like that. Uh, Atlanta, favorites at home against Colorado. Cincinnati, favorites at home against Montreal. Philly, big favorites. Charlotte FC, a favorite. Haven't seen that in a while. Even at home, we were dogs, I think, last couple games. But uh, facing the fire, I kind of like it. I think definitely it's a chance for charlotte trap what? line trap that's line. a trap line yeah, it that's could a be a trap line. line charlotte's banged up for sure I, I definitely know well all about charlotte's injury issues and lack of depth but they do get two guys back copetti and jones who are big time starters two of the best five players on the team who were suspended last game and come back so kind of like their chances why do you think it's trap line uh just because charlotte is really not good at soccer explain why because uh that's well, they are kind of, they're, getting, they're getting better they're getting better <laughs> but like their results are like you beat atlanta that's great but like westberg was in net gg was out up top they're kind of on their way down it was it was a great win but i'm never gonna bet on charlotte it's just like one of those things where i don't think you get rich betting on charlotte oh i agree with that yeah I, you I, also I... don't get rich betting on chicago 
That's that very good. And Chicago so, did beat St. Louis at home. I think home field advantage carries the day for Charlotte there. Absolutely. The I, th I think yeah. it's it's tough. But it's definitely not a batting line. And I will be stacking my Charlotte guys just because I'm I'm hopeless uh, in that regard. I'm going to be doing it. But are there any other – these first-page matchups that say that scream to you, like, I need to get some some guys in my SO5 from these, these faves? Obviously, the Union, I would expect them – I would expect them – I would expect the money line to be like around like minus 200 there for mm -hmm. the union uh, FC Cincinnati also like they're going to be fresh at home versus Montreal. I kind of would have expected them to be bigger favorites as well. I don't know how Atlanta is favorited. That's a fairly, fairly strong, like favorited more than, than Charlotte is versus Chicago. Yeah. And Colorado's and, actually found a little bit of form recently, right? And they're better than Charlotte, I think. Yeah, well, uh, they're so, or at least equal. At least, at least we at we least gotta, we at drew least them, equal. You know? Yeah, yeah. And so. they absolutely embarrassed Atlanta. Yeah, we did. We so. took. Uh, you know, the thing about that was, if you if you really care, if anyone cares about non sower aspects of MLS, listen to my uh, my Charlotte soccer show, and we uh, we saluted like traveling support. Actually, we talk about home field advantage being such a huge deal in MLS all the time. I was shocked at how much Charlotte's like fifteen hundred, two thousand people absolutely took over mercedes-benz stadium so yeah i don't think atlanta's home field advantage is at the strongest point right now and i do think colorado has a chance to go potentially even win that game or get a point out of it uh, although this week like per perhaps the the home field is a little bit less uh, mostly it has to do with travel and then obviously the sure. fans. but you yeah could get some lower attendance in the midweek back-to-back -back home games is kind of nice when you're doing these dgws for sure yeah. charlotte has a home game on the weekend against nashville so i'm pretty pumped about that let's move to page two Mm -hmm. uh, you see Toronto and the Red Bulls kind of even money there. Orlando, tiny little favorites over NYC uh, with a plus number. Columbus Crew, the assholes who, you know, sat Lucas Zellerion on, on all of us when he was in all, everybody's main lineup last weekend. Uh, yeah. Uh, they're favored over the Carson uh, Galaxy who are making a big trip. And then uh, Dallas, slight favorites with the Whitecaps. Uh, that's kind of a small number to me. Any traps you see here or guys that jump out of USO5 wise? The Toronto line feels weird. There's the like. We know how much NF you love Insigne, you know. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I love him. Uh, the New York Red Bulls got a new coach, so it's like in the NFL sports like that. Typically, mm -hmm. when you get a new coach, like you kind of get hot. Yeah, uh, new and couch, falls new, new off. coach bounce. Right, new coach bounce. So maybe that's factored in. Who knows? New York City. There's no way. Barraza, man. They need to, <laughs> eye test wise, change in net, absolutely Orlando. Like it's a just based on the goalie, it's a huge difference. One one goalie wins you games, the other actively like loses you points. Mm -hmm. uh, the crew at home versus Carson, I think is automatic. Uh, not financial advice, but you know, lock it in. The so only like, thing, do you think? That, do yeah. you think would they put would, would they pull another surprise rotation on us and rest Cucho or something like that? I kind of had that thought in my head. Even if they, even if they rest, I don't think it's uh, right. They're, it's they're. Uh, how Carson. bad is the galaxy really in your Although, mind? Although, say something nice about Carson. They did a cool thing on Mother's Day where they announced the starting lineup and said, like Sarah's son. Mm -hmm. Sarah's yeah, and that's very nice. Son, I, yeah. I follow Sarah Neal on Twitter. She's one of my personal favorites. So that was like, yeah. she's like, I finally made a starting lineup. I was like, yeah, oh, that was I pretty funny. Good. Yeah. So. Everybody loves Jalen Neal. Everybody loves Sarah Neal. You know, what can we say? Yeah. Uh, despite their, the, the crummy shirt that he's forced to wear at his job every, every other week, uh, every week. So uh, let's look quick final page of the odd sheet here, and then we'll get into some more like this uh, matchup typey stuff. But Nashville favorites from over the reeling Miami, although Miami's gotten it back a little bit. I like Minnesota United at home against the Dynamo with no Ache Ache. Real Salt Lake. I, I, I'm I'm terrified that Savarino is going to rest for some bullshit in a great matchup here at home against Portland. Uh, the Sounders face the worst team in the league. I know, according to you, Jake, and uh, yeah. your boys, LAFC, nice, big, juicy, minus 205 hosting KC. Who's resurgent? That's that's a big number. LAFC is just dominant, though. Yeah, I, I'm 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 shocked. The bookmakers have Seattle as minus 160. Like th that, frankly, should be a minus 500 almost in my eyes. <laughs> um, sure. Austin's without without uh, Drewsy, who at least like has some talent. 
Um, but they he's did like get Fagundes back. They got they got Diego back. I don't know if that's a positive. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, and time watchers of this league will know that's not necessarily a good thing. I don't know. It's positive. They're selfish. They're a selfish team. It's all collapsing. When you lose two Haitian farmers, things like you kind of lose the locker room. Mm-hmm. That's why they're taking shots from 40 yards instead of like passing to yeah. Giassi. They'd rather shoot from 40. Everyone's out for themselves. It's disgusting, frankly. Wolf, Wolf has to go. I've been saying it since uh, the fall of 2021. I think he he's kind of like boys with the with the team owner, right? So it's it's mm-hmm. he's got he's got like the ultimate vote of confidence in terms of just like it's going to be really tough to get him out of there, and especially after then. So he was horrible as a coach in 2021. He's he makes really weird tactical decisions. He's he subs fullbacks more than any other coach I've ever seen in any soccer league ever. Like, when have you seen fullbacks subbing so much as this what this Josh Josh Wolf does? And then they had their good 2022, then choked they kind of choked it away at the end. Made I wouldn't call it good, I'd call it lucky. I mean, I think it was pretty good at times. It can't be all luck, man. I mean, I mean, I mean, Drusy was the MVP for a reason, you know, it's like right uh or mvp candidate right Haney won it right but uh drucy uh being gone just means there's absolutely nothing to like about austin even though i am a died in the wool brad stuver fan like brad stuver is a great goalkeeper and an even better human being and you know just the it's, ultimate it's man, the culture but. there in austin um obviously it's an old boys club right you had claudio claudio reyna yeah as a sporting director there just just sick what you know that was who a, knows what kind that of was a disaster so it's just an old boys there. club they got Owen out there, he's okay. It's 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 what I it's what I've been saying. I don't want to. Why don't get, you admit I don't that you get started because I can go on this for. Th- Please admit though that, that the basis of this hate is your hatred of pre court. Like all this other stuff, while maybe true, is flowing out of your base. Like you hate pre court more than anyone. Yeah, that starts there. Yeah, yeah. So. It's hard to say what like the ultimate end of the Austin hate is. Because at this point, it's just all consuming. So it's hard to like point it like yeah. that was the first. So, yeah. Well, Austin is my hometown before I moved to Carolina. So I do, I do have a soft spot for the Verde. I like to see them do well. I love Stuver. Stuver's in all my lineups. But, uh, but yeah, I, I feel the hate. I, I respect the hate. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah. you know, that, that's where you go. So w- we look at the odds. Uh, what, what are just some general thoughts on the game week as you see, like, you're going for your fourth straight podium here. What what are your uh, major concerns in your lineup building? And how do you see the weekend? What do you like? What do you not like? Uh, I just got to – first is like the the mental to just accept that there's going to be rotations. And I'm not going to get mad. You know, Zella doesn't play. It happens. It's MLS. There's eight games in a month. Like, it's not the end of the world. So, so it's going to happen. So just play my guys because I'm not going to overthink it. I'm going to play my guys. I'm going to play the correlations. What I do, like I make a draft as soon as it opens. I, I do three drafts, and then at the end, I, pu- I put them in. So I just go through my, my normal process, play my guys. I know what I'm doing. I know how I th- or I have my way of how I think I'm being successful, and I just like trust that process. It, if somebody gets rotated, they get rotated. What a, what a zen approach. I absolutely love it. Yeah, yeah. It's very zen. When you say you do three drafts, what does that mean? Uh, like three different drafts in the lineup builder on Sora Data, or yeah, so I do uh, the Sora Data lineup builder uh, as soon as the next game week opens, so it's like mm-hmm. before the games start, and then I do one right after the games to see how things have changed, and then I do one a cup, you know, wow. like I'll do one later tonight and like finalize it. I have a brain trust. I have a, my best friend and I go over it. Um, it's a good process. It's work. It's working. Like you said, you live and breathe this stuff. It, it kind of goes yeah. to that thing of like, it, it, it kind of makes me f- like look at my own processes and things like that and how I'm approaching this game. And like, you know, not mad. Not, I'm fine. I, I've had mm-hmm. some de- like, I don't love my results, but, uh, but uh, yeah. like, I don't hate my results. I just don't love my results. So like, it challenges me. I'm like hearing that you're like getting after it and like drafting in a process like that makes me think, okay, I need to be working a little harder. Like, may, uh, like it's not, uh, yes, I'm getting some bad luck at times, but I could definitely be working a little harder if I really truly do care about improving my so rare. Uh, yeah. It's result. not necessarily hard work. 
it's like efficient work and it's a blast sure. and I have fun doing it. Um, I'm not like actively, like I'm not searching for stuff. I certainly see all the news and I watch all the games is, mm-hmm. is a main thing is like, I rely on the eye test more than anything. For so sure. I trust, I trust my eye, I trust my gut. Obviously I stick with the injuries like throughout the day, but you know, a draft takes me 15, 20 minutes. Sure. Yeah. Obviously so, it's not, it's not like it's it needs to be it hard in. work necessarily, but I do, I'll just admit like mm-hmm. the you people who listen to the show, hear me bitch, but ah, I sucked this week. I sucked this week. And it's like, part of the reason is because I'm just leaving it late. I'm building at the last minute. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm using the fact of like my busy life and work and stuff like that. And other things going on to like allow justify, like pushing somewhere, you know, to the, to the last minute and just doing it right before, you know, a few hours before lock and stuff like that. And that doesn't always work. So the biggest, the biggest key for me is I look at the games. I, I look at my gallery, the cards I have in my gallery. And I think, well, what will lead me to having the highest ceiling? Like what string of events? So mm-hmm. for the lineup I had there, LAFC smashes Salt Lake and, and Gil Gills, and that's pre- that's pretty much it. Like that's my win condition, and and it's the most likely of the win conditions in my gallery. So I know to put that together on on lesser weeks when LAFC doesn't have such a good matchup. I'll put Palacios away from from Big John. I'll I'll stick him in U twenty three. Like I, I try to get as many correlations as possible. Like I think of what's the most la- likely outcomes, and I try to string them together like that. I don't know if that helps anybody, but I see a lot of people just go off sore data, like go off the stats, go off the numbers. Right. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you next. Is like, do do you rate the matchup ratings and stuff like that, or no? You, you just uh, think about the games and eye test a little. Like more. I know I know the matchups in my head, kind of like what like what would happen. I, I know generally how teams play, what kind of works and what doesn't against certain teams. And I really know the cards in my gallery well, and I know the cards I want to get in my gallery well. Um, before I get them, so like I just got Pablo Ruiz to put my my Saverino because I think that that has like a very high ceiling at, when it hits when it hits. So that's kind yeah, of what I do. I should think probably the, get a Pablo myself because I'm Sav is a huge cog of my gallery. Think think uh, look at the winning lineups. I I look at the winning lineups of almost every competition every week, and I try to see what I can learn from them. Well, let's do that with the, that's really good segue because go. I wanted to look at your lineup here. This is your yeah. first place lineup that we're sitting on, hoping that it uh, will hold here. Mm-hmm. This is a, a nice LAFC stack with heel, kind of kind of hard to beat that. Obviously, like yeah. w- uh, some people always, ask, anytime someone asks me like, "How can I do better?" It's so rare. I just say, "Buy better cards," right? You know, that's how you do it. Like, so buy the best cards and win, and then sell your prizes to make up for the money that you spent on yeah. buying the better cards. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about this lineup. Well, I've always like I've had uh, Palacios a very long time. Uh, when I buy a goalie, I always get the backup. So I think I got Palacios for about two hundred bucks. John McCarthy for not much less than that. Uh, Gill was a reward. I won when I did well in two seventy. I sold up and got Gill instead. Uh, Vela was the same after my first podium. I got Fakir, I believe, as a reward. I won a Fakir one time for a podium. Nice. Good. Sold sold Fakir and got Vela and Boanka. I just said I can't sleep at night if I don't have this player and he wins the golden boot. And mm-hmm. now he's off to the golden boot and I can sleep at night because I have him. <laughs> yeah, Boanga is the is the, the, the great uh, great regret of my my off season here this past winter for sure. I, I don't know why I didn't pick one up. Uh great card, great player. So much fun to watch, so much fun to uh, watch in your gallery and in your lineups. I'm sure uh, he's he's the man, and he he does it. it, it these aren't bailouts with Buenga. You know, a lot of time, Drew, no. he had his great year last year, and a lot of them I, we talked about on the show before were bailouts, and and the, there's no bailouts with these Buenga. tap-ins. So, yeah, these aren't tap-ins. I, yeah. I, yeah, I I stay away from tap-in merchants for all all that I can. They don't like a Vander, Gazdog. Those guys don't. Those guys God, don't see dog. my legs because bane of my existence. <laughs> I freaking hate yeah. God's dog so much. I, I don't know. Maybe I'd feel different if I had him, obviously. But mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. I'm looking. You. I, I looked at your gallery here real quick. You said uh, Palacios. You've had him for a long time. Twenty yeah. twenty rewards. One with Palacios. You gotta love that. There you go. I love the Giassi with the kids uh, profile it's, pic. Though. It's all about the vibes. All about a the true, vibes. A true a true member of the fan club for sure. So. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. So 372 is rough for me. I, I love what you said about just sort of making a Zen agree, agreement with yourself regarding the rotation because it's going to be tough. There, there's mm -hmm. going to be rotations come out of the blue. Everyone's going to bitch. You're going to see, you know, the screenshot pain flying yeah. all over the place. And I think you just need to be strategic. Like if the good news is a lot of the coaches give pressers today, like uh, tonight's a night that you can go back and really like listen to these pressers because – it's kind of nice. A lot of times you don't. So we get them on Thursday for Saturday games. And we have to like put them in into lock. I feel like we are a little bit closer to the actual games here in this midweek situation. Maybe not uh, by pure numbers wise, but it just feels like you're. We're, the coaches did a lot of early pressers here on Monday rather than like, I don't know. Do you know what, you yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I get what you mean. Yeah, yeah. A lot More of it info also than we would normally have is what I'm trying to say. A lot, a lot of it also. I think people get very frustrated with the MLS reporting and and things the coaches say and they're like not familiar with with coach talk coach speak and mm -hmm. i'm very fluid in coach speak mm -hmm. so it's like that's that's also a skill to develop is like that's coach speak he has to say that or what is he trying to do when he's saying this quote like it's all very motivated so yeah that's a, that's another one just kind of learn that you can't really take these these coaches at face value at all yeah but that, but a good example of that would be like from Charlotte is uh, I always bring it back to Charlotte. Mm -hmm. uh, we had our goalkeeper George Marks, you know the the under twenty three young kid. Right. He was filling in and because Kalina was hurt, and Marks was doing well. Marks had like won two games in a row. He had his first ever clean sheet, and in the next press conference after Marks's first career clean sheet, the coach is saying, "Yeah, man, you know, like we really." Would love to have that veteran presence back, uh, back on the in the defensive back line. So you know that even though Marks is doing good, you know Kalina's is coming back. Like yeah. the coach praises one player, but he like he slips in the veteran presence thing. You're like oh, that means that he actually wants the other guy. So that uh, becoming versed and fluent in coach speak, like you said, is a very important skill. I agree. And then also, you're a Charlotte guy. Know know your guys. Like they have right. a home matchup. Absolutely hammer them. Like how does Charlotte score their goals? You said Copetti's back goes who to who that's your paradisipses which i think i think you pretty much always need to win is a goal like one guy getting assist one guy getting a goal yeah Just chuck call, that in check we call that the wombo in. combo if, yeah. if your if your card gets the assist to the card that you have the goal score of I, I, we call that the wombo combo and it's it's, that's kind of how i separate in my head i i do a wombo combo defense goalie and mm -hmm. then i do like forward mid or forward forward and then i do like my free space auto clicks which is yes. gill Haney, right. Right. Uh, you, Lucho, you don't need to stack Gill with it. You stack Gill with a good lineup, and it's gonna it's gonna pay right. Off. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, exactly. there's nothing but bums around Gill. You don't and, need Verone, and his coach yeah. is a bum, and I don't know right. how he succeeds because he's set up to fail. Yeah. Well, uh, I love all your thoughts, man. Uh, you've given some good perspective, and I hope even though we're not necessarily like touting players here in this, like mm -hmm. a lot of just what you've explained process wise, it can be really helpful to users yeah. who are listening to you and and sort of reading between the lines of what you're saying. So I really appreciate those thoughts. I want to get into another thing that we appreciate, which is our sacrifice to the Optigods here. Sacrifice. It's the Who Disc giveaway for Giassi's Artists. You have there you go. set up a contest. You're going to give away Giassi's Artists Limited mm -hmm. to uh, listeners of the mm -hmm. cast, mm -hmm. but the number that you give away is going to be based on a game that we're about to play. Right. It's going to be based on your performance. Wow. So, so, it's up, so the listeners are depending on me? Right, you were talking about being a people's oh. champion earlier with draft kicks going away. Like now, you can really be. Let's now go, you, baby, let's go. Now you can really be okay. So <laughs> how it works is I give you a statement like an "I was" or "I am," and then you get a guess. And if you get it wrong, then I give you another clue, and then you get another guess. And if you get that wrong, then you get another clue and a final guess. So if you get it in one of those guesses, then you're good. I'll give one away. Who dis? Um, I love it. There you go. So first one. First clue, I was the number one fantasy defender from the 2020 MLS season. And and if you know it, you know, play along at home and as you're listening, like think of when you can get it or not. And it's always fun. As well. uh, Antonio Carlos? <laughs> no. Uh, I played college soccer at the university for which my dad is president of, where I won a championship in 2018. Wow. That is uh, uh, no So clue. what you can get out of that is he was in college in 2018, so he's from the college. The, and he's, the, his dad was president is a fun fact. And he was, <laughs> he was an SO5 uh, baller two years later. 
Right. Um, so he's young. Uh, it's not Walker Zimmerman. No. No. Yeah. It's no. not. That's a guess, so, I guess. But so third, uh, you'll can kind of gives you the the team here if you think about it. Um, I made my major league soccer debut on April thirteenth, two thousand nineteen, against the Colorado Rapids, where I played the full ninety minutes and recorded an assist to Luciano Acosta in a three-two win. Well, shoot. What year? His debut was in 2019. So, hint, Lucho was not on the same team Correct. that he is. Uh, Julian Gressel. No, Donovan Pines. <laughs> oh, Pinesy. That's right. That's why his That's why his 21 card went for like one ETH, his one of 121. The, the king wow. of MLS is back, Donovan Pines. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I own him. He's uh, he's back. Sorry, I screwed that up. I, I knew that I wanted DC United. I at least got the t- yeah. your clue led me to the right team. So I apologize, listeners, on that. One. So this one, uh, if you don't get this one, like some people might call you fraud. I won't, but like that may be something. I already say, feel like a fraud for not one. getting pines. So the, uh, you can't hurt me anymore. So, so I was traded to Charlotte FC in exchange for an initial 100k in allocation money, which could rise to as much as 325 thousand. Traded to Charlotte FC. To Charlotte. Say that. Say, say the thing one more time. Sorry. Uh, traded to Charlotte in exchange for a hundred thousand dollars of Garber bucks, which could raise to three hundred and twenty-five thousand. Mm, it's not Miram. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's too uh, recent. I have represented the United States at the under 14, under 15, and under 17 level. Jalen. Yes, Jalen Lindsay. The last clue go. would have been I've spent the majority of my career position locked by bums on the Zardis fan club <laughs> hate list, which would be Harrison Awful <laughs> and Graham Zusi. So, oh, man. You hate Awful as a crew guy? Come on. Man. Yeah, I, 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 despise, I despise him. <laughs> I thought everyone, I thought everyone uh, with with a, a, an inkling towards the crew loved King Harrison. Uh, so there's my, one. My uh, my uh, my uh, my my Charlotte Shocker Show podcast host, uh, mm-hmm. a great friend named John. On a recent episode, we were talking about Affle, and he's like, "I'm good on Affle. I'm I'm good <laughs> You've on seen Affle. enough. I, yeah, I've seen enough. I'm seen good. enough. When it comes, yeah. to he, I said, "What do you think about Harrison Affle? I'm good. So that, I'm that's good. pretty much how I feel as well." Okay, so one number... one one Giassi to give away. Now this is the rubber match. Hopefully I can get this. Right. Here's the rubber match. Uh so I played the most minutes in the 2022 MLS season. Glesnus. No. I think he was like third, but so close. God. Uh in January of 2008, I broke the record for the most goals scored in a single season by an American soccer player in a European first division. In January of 2008, I broke the record for the most goals scored in a single season by an American soccer player playing in a European first division. Wow. Giassi. No. (laughs) (laughs) Why not? Throwing it out there. Uh, I began my career with the Metro Stars, where my dad was the head coach. Oh, that, that total bum. He led the league in minutes played. He did. That he bald did. freak, Michael Bradley. The bald freak, Michael Bradley. There you go. <laughs> well, hey, at least it's a, at least it's another Giassi for the uh, the, f- the fact the that his dad coached him when he entered the league and is now coaching him as he's uh, he's going to ride off into the sunset. Yeah. I think it's like a very special father son thing. I also I have a picture with Michael Bradley. He trained or like they did the preseason camp nearby, and he was a super nice guy. He was on the phone with his wife, and I was like can I get a picture like kind of awkwardly, but like, I just like, and he was like, oh, absolutely. Like, hold on, honey. Like put it down. Like talk to me a little bit. I was like, you know, big fan. Love your cold America. Mexico. Great guy. I love, it. I love and hate Michael Bradley. I have a huge love hate relationship with him. Obviously extremely decorated going back 15 some years, as you said, and uh, mm-hmm. stalwart of the U S men's national team mm-hmm. has cost us some games has won us some games. Mm-hmm. Don't never owned him in so rare. So uh, he's always beating me. And like, I, like uh, Andy Black, one of my buddies, I'm always like, 
Michael Bradley fucking sucks, man. He's like, he's like, he's the king. Like he 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 had a run here like last year where he was like turning some amazing. It's scores. crazy that he led the league in minutes. Yeah, I think his That's... time has finally come to an end. I don't see him coming back from this London trip uh, yeah. for some experimental therapies paying off, but who knows? Yeah, maybe. So there you go, two Giassis for the people. I love it. So well, well done. You can decide however you want to give those away. I know you do have a little bit, like you are going to give them, but it needs to be a right. good home. You're not just going to give them to a bad home. Right. So comment section, uh, something nice about Giassi. Perfect. Comment a, your you your Giassi story. There you go. And uh, Jake will decide from reading the comments which two uh, have earned it the most. Any uh, timeliness, timeliness a factor? The first two that you read that you like or, or first come, first uh, serve? What do you think? I kind of uh, like that because I, I like because we're running out of time. We're going to be doing another episode in a couple in a couple days. So okay. yeah, I say timeliness is oh, timeliness matters. It's up up you, until you record your next episode and then like submission message me right before and then I'll pick and you can announce Perfect. it on the show. Yeah. Sounds great. I love it. Well, let's uh, without further ado, then it's definite decisive time and uh, it's up to you to save the definite decisives because uh, this yeah. is something DraftKicks was worried about when we first started the show. He was like. Man, if our definite decisive suck, you know that what we could we're gonna have to kill the segment or something like that. And I was like, we're never killing this segment; it's too fun. Yeah. But uh, as you can see from last week, my second straight game where my guaranteed goal was not even in the squad. I had to gray him out. Lucas Z, unfortunately, uh, Cucho, I think had a couple hockey assists, but did not uh, get any goals. Evander had two goals, I believe, no assists. Steve Clark. Uh, had a tough game with the Houston red card. And then Kalina got to, got his clean sheet killed like in the final minutes of the game by uh, some bullshit thing. Here's the thing uh, our coach, Charlotte coach needs to learn, and all coaches probably already know except for this guy. Don't make a substitution when the other team has a corner kick. Like, don't sub defenders on a corner kick. Even he he made this a rash substitution. Messes up the marking. Right. He had subbed this guy in, a 21-year-old uh, draft pick named Hamidi Diop. It was his second ever MLS minute uh, experience. And he subbed him in, and like he did something. Nobody knows quite what he did. It, I don't think it was on camera, but he messed up something or had kind of a weird attitude, and the coach subbed him out like 10 minutes later. So like he got the, 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 the dreaded sub in, sub out, which rarely happens. You hate to see it. But the fact that it happened while the other team had a corner kick, and then they scored off the corner kick, and I lost my clean, clean sheet, and I lost – 50 points, some odd points in my Kalina super rare, uh, you know, yeah. lineup and all this bullshit. Cause this fucking hurt. idiot. Yeah. Sorry. I'm swearing a lot tonight. Forgive me. Uh, 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 I'm playing loose and fast with the, uh, the fast. ratings here. Hopefully they don't uh, k kick the, kick the video off the channel, but uh, well, well, yeah. Like, so the no offense, but I listen to these and most of the time, almost immediately, I know they're not going to hit. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me why uh, you, you pick, you pick not the great matchups. Like, frankly, you could pick Boanga like every game and right. just have better chances like that. Obviously, that's not fun and for content. Right. Kind of, you're not picking guys that are hot. You're picking guys that are like, you think they're like, you think it's coming up. Does that make sense? Yeah, they're do, you think I'm making do picks instead of Which like, I, I love it. Form? I love do pick, but like, people who are do, like, Gil was do. Sure. Is Chicharito do? He's a tap in merchant. We were we already we already right. that. Are you, are you due for a tap in? I don't right. know who's to say. No, it's fair yeah. feedback, and all I can say is that I make the picks a little bit based on heart. I don't consciously try to pick guys that I think are due, but it could, certainly could be seeping in subconsciously. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, maybe my leak on picking DDs. Well, there's probably a couple of them to be honest, but mm -hmm. one leak would be that I rely maybe too much on the odds, and I just kind of try to pick guys in big favorite matchups that maybe yeah. aren't necessarily hot. And the other would be that I don't. I, it's a it's a philosophical question of like what should the definite decisive be? Am I trying to recommend somebody to play somebody that they wouldn't otherwise play right. if if right. I didn't give them the stamp of approval, or am I just trying to up my record and have like a bunch of green hits? It's 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 the constant struggle. You can play for struggle. the you can play for the record, or you can play for like being a people's champion. Yeah, the the uh, which I think the, you're trying to highest. do like. It's a Highs discount. Like, this will have yeah, you 240. Exactly. Like, I think he's got a good shot. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, nothing wrong with either. Trying to get doses, baby. What can I say? Trying to get that doses. Sweet, Guy's sweet got a low 15. Like, maybe CJ Sapong gets one against the Red Bulls. He's cheap. He's a good. There you go. I'm going to be better. I'm going to be better in the second half of the season. But for now, it's mm -hmm. we're putting it up to you to save our definite decisives. And, right. uh, yeah. 
So I'm about to, uh, uh, it's time to, to share the screen here. And without further ado, I don't know. I'm going to give you, how about this? I, I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to give you my three shitty definite decisives in a row. Okay. And then you can tell me why they all suck. And then give okay. me yours. Okay. So first off, my guaranteed goal right off the bat. I know you're going to hate this one. But he was dangerous as a sub against Charlotte. Mm -hmm. I like the matchup against Colorado. I'm going with Georgius Giacomakis. I think mm -hmm. I spelled the name wrong there, but I will fix that at some point. Yeah, uh, I like Georgios to get in there and get on the score sheet. He he he, they, it's, he was pissed at his teammates for losing that match, and he might be the only one with any like fire and heart left in in uh, his mentality for Atlanta right now until they fire Pineda. Lucas let me down badly with a rotational sub. Uh, I'm going to try to be zen about that a little bit more based yeah. on your advice, Jake. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I'm going to go right back to the well because he's going to get in on the decisives, I think, in a, in a very nice matchup. Like you said, Col uh, Columbus way underrated in terms of what they might be able to do in this matchup. And then hook me up with Dane St. Clair. You know I love my risky picks. That's where uh, that's where it all falls apart for you. Picks, picks, <laughs> at home like against Dane Houston with no no Herrera. At home against Houston with no Herrera. So it's not I'm not picking this like straight out of the blue. I have some reasoning for my pick, but right. you don't like it. It's all well, it's also Minnesota. So it's like one in theory, like you have to watch Minnesota, which <laughs> is like can be really, really tough to watch Minnesota. Hey Reynoso. So then that's back, like baby. kind Reynoso of bad vibe. Coming back. I like the Lucas pick. Um the GG pick, I was like right away when I saw it, I like had the immediate like eh, reaction just because he's not like fully back to fit yet. But then like he had the sub, so I kind of get it. Would I pick a guy who's kind of like coming off a sub and been back from injury? No. If he played 90 the week, like on the weekend, then then yeah. But just in general, like I'm not going to pick guys coming off subs. I love it. For injury that's... related reasons. Yeah. I think that's fair. I'm sticking with it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Cha I'm not changing my guys. I, it, these are that we're going. This the the line is Giacomakis. We're not. You can't let me line. sway you. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. You yeah. Can't exactly. Let me sway you because then you can't. Sway right. You're, you've only gotten three ability. straight podiums. Right. You can right. Only why, see why should I be the listening to your advice? Right. 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 You can only see the line of thinking, and then go from there. But you shouldn't. You know. Yeah. Well, I'm anxious to see your decisives, and I believe there's a theme uh -huh. here, right? So let's go with the goal first. Tell me about it. Uh, Jordan Morris, uh, second in the Golden Boot. Yes, four in one game, but he's playing the worst team in the league and the team that is totally has a broken spirit. They have no fight of them. They are all selfish. Seattle plays together. They play great passing. They play some really good looking soccer at times. Jordan Morris does not have Rui Diaz holding him back or stealing his tap ins. I think he works well with Haber. And that leads into my automatic assist, which would be uh, Ladero. Oh, wow. Stack them up. Stack them up. I Stack think up. Uh, out of all the cards in my gallery, when I go through and build my lineups, I will like, what is my best chance? And I think like my best chance of that, like Wombo combo, as you say, it would be Ladero to Morris. Yeah. Jomo, I, I stupidly sold Jomo in the off season and didn't use the ETH to, uh, to, finance a Boango Pete purchase so that's that's mm -hmm. how dumb I am but he's had a good year he's uh, uh in a year where it's tough to count on Seattle forwards Rui Diaz has been hurt the whole time a bear's been up and up and down they got some some guy named Rothrock scored a goal for them last weekend yeah I've never even heard of I, I will admit uh so I've, yeah I've generally been splitting Seattle offense defense I have Frey Yamar and I normally do not keep them in the same lineup with Ladero and Morris. But you probably will this week against Austin, won't you? This week, I absolutely will. I'll put them with one of like the auto-click guys I have as the extra spot. And that leads us to your clean sheet, which I love that you made a conditional clean sheet. Tell us about the conditions here. Right. I did submit an application for <laughs> – in the pregame, uh, I appealed for a conditional clean sheet. And you which were granted. Is and I was granted. I was great. I did grant your application to the Zardes fan club this morning. So then you granted me back with uh, this conditional. So the first is if Uridi starts, then I'm picking Stefan Frey. If Giassi starts, I'm going to go with Sean Johnson. Because uh, you you believe in Giassi's ability to score even with such trash all around him in the offensive I, lineup. I could never root or pick against 
Geossi. So I do as many mental gymnastics as I can to think of ways where things could be successful for Geossi, but not Austin. Brilliant. I love yeah. it, man. Jake, you've been a great <laughs> guest. Uh, you've, you've dropped knowledge. You've dropped philosophy. You've Thank dropped you. a little history. Uh, you've really, uh, you know, I, your love for MLS shines through, and that's the whole point of the show. Even, whether I'm good at So Rare or not is, is certainly up for debate, and it probably changes week to week, but my love for MLS can never be questioned. That's why I love doing this show. And that's the most electric watch, the most electric watch that you can get entertainment wise, like quality, who knows, but if you're looking to like have some fun and watch some games, you watch MLS. Yep. Can't, can't be said any better. So we will peace out on that, man. I want to thank you so much. Everybody check out Zardis fan club, join the club, comment on the video, win the cards, tell a good story, say something nice about, the greatest striker in U.S. men's national team history. And, you know, join in the club. It's a state of mind. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, I, hopefully I made you laugh today. <laughs>